Good evening. My name is Reverend Katie Schwind Williams. Welcome to Boone Memorial Presbyterian Church's Good Friday service. Over the past six weeks of Lent, we've been reading through Matthew's Gospel to hear his version of Christ's life from beginning to end. We've been imagining the things standing between humanity and God as locked doors, both those things that we find in Scripture and in our own lives. We've also been paying attention to how Jesus unlocks some of those doors during his ministry. Tonight, we will hear Matthew's account of Jesus' trial and crucifixion. We will watch as humanity shuts door after door in Christ's face, and we'll reflect on how we're still doing this today. I invite you to take all the time you need to think through the questions that arise. Pause the video if you have to. It can be tempting to want to skip ahead to the joy of the resurrection, but first, we have to deal with the reality of the crucifixion, as well as the lessons that we still need to learn from the cross. So friends, be gentle with yourselves, but don't look away. Let's face together the doors that we've locked behind us so that we can learn what exactly God can do with locked doors. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came. With him was a large crowd carrying swords and clubs. They had been sent by the chief priests and elders of the people. His betrayer had given them a sign. Arrest the man I kiss. Just then he came to Jesus and said, Hello, Rabbi. Then he kissed him. But Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came and grabbed Jesus and arrested him. One of those with Jesus reached for his sword. Striking the high priest's slave, he cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put the sword back into its place. All those who use the sword will die by the sword. Or do you think that I'm not able to ask my father and he will send to me more than 12 battle groups of angels right away? But if I did that, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that say this must happen? Then Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me like a thief? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, but you didn't arrest me. But all this has happened so that what the prophet said in the scriptures might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left Jesus and ran away. Those who arrested Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest. The legal experts and the elders had gathered there. Peter followed him from a distance until he came to the high priest's courtyard. He entered that area and sat outside with the officers to see how it would turn out. The chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus 
so that they could put him to death. They didn't find anything they could use from the many false witnesses who were willing to come forward. But finally, they found two who said, this man said, I can destroy God's temple and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood and said to Jesus, aren't you going to respond to the testimony these people have brought against you? But Jesus was silent. The high priest said, by the living God, I demand that you tell us whether you are the Christ, God's son. You said it, Jesus replied. But I say to you that from now on, you'll see the human one sitting on the right hand of the Almighty and coming on the heavenly clouds. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, he's insulting God. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, you've heard this insult against God. What do you think? And they answered, he deserves to die. Then they spit in his face and beat him. They hit him and said, prophecy for us, Christ, who hit you? Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant woman came and said to him, You were also with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it in front of them all, saying, I don't know what you're talking about. When he went over to the gate, another woman saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. With a solemn pledge, he denied it again, saying, I don't know the man. A short time later, those standing there came and said to Peter, you must be one of them. The way you talk gives you away. Then he cursed and swore, I don't know the man. At that very moment, the rooster crowed. Peter remembered Jesus' words. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and cried uncontrollably. all the chief priests and the elders of the people reached the decision to have Jesus put to death. They bound him, led him away, and turned him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who betrayed Jesus, saw that Jesus was condemned to die, he felt deep regret. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, and said, I did wrong because I betrayed an innocent man. But they said, what is that to us? That's your problem. Judas threw the silver pieces into the temple and left. Then he went and hanged himself. The chief priests picked up the silver pieces and said, according to the law, it's not right to put this money in the treasury. Since it was used to pay for someone's life, it's unclean. So they decided to use it to buy the potter's field where strangers could be buried. That's why that field is called Field of Blood to this very day. This fulfilled the words of Jeremiah the prophet. And I took the 30 pieces of silver 
the price for the one whose price had been set by some of the Israelites. And I gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Jesus was brought before the governor. The governor said, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, That's what you say. But he didn't answer when the chief priests and elders accused him. Then Pilate said, Don't you hear the testimony they bring against you? But he didn't answer, not even a single word. So the governor was greatly amazed. It was customary during the festival for the governor to release to the crowd one prisoner, whomever they might choose. At that time, there was a well-known prisoner named Jesus Barabbas. When the crowd had come together, Pilate asked them, Whom would you like me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? He knew that the leaders of the people had handed him over because of jealousy. While he was serving as judge, his wife sent this message to him. Leave that righteous man alone. I've suffered much today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to kill Jesus. The governor said, which of the two do you want me to release to you? Barabbas, Barabbas, they replied. Pilate said, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, Crucify him. But he said, Why? What wrong has he done? They shouted even louder, Crucify, Crucify him. him. Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere and that a riot was starting. So he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I'm innocent of this man's blood, he said. It's your problem. All the people replied, let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus whipped, then handed him over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's house, and they gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a red military coat on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They put a stick in his right hand. Then they bowed down in front of him and mocked him, saying, Hey, King of the Jews! After they spit on him, they took the stick and struck his head again and again. When they finished mocking him, they stripped him of the military coat and put his own clothes back on him. They led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they found Simon, a man from Cyrene. They forced him to carry his cross. When they came to a place called Golgotha, which means skull place, they gave Jesus wine mixed with vinegar to drink. But after tasting it, 
He didn't want to drink it. After they crucified him, they divided up his clothes among them by drawing lots. They sat there, guarding him. They placed above his head the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. They crucified him with two outlaws, one on his right side and one on his left. until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. At about three, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you left me? After hearing him, some standing there said, he's calling Elijah. One of them ran over, took a sponge full of vinegar, and put it on a pole. He offered it to Jesus to drink. But the rest of them said, let's see if Elijah will come and save him. Again, Jesus cried out with a loud shout. Then he died. Look, the curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised. After Jesus' resurrection, they came out of their graves and went into the holy city where they appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and what had happened, they were filled with awe and said, this was certainly God's son. Many women were watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to serve him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. That evening, a man named Joseph came. He was a rich man from Arimathea who had become a disciple of Jesus. He came to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate gave him permission to take it. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and laid it in his own new tomb which he had carved out of the rock. After he rolled a large stone at the door of the tomb, he went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting in front of the tomb. The next day, which was the day after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate. They said, Sir, we remember that while that deceiver was still alive, he said, After three days I will arise. Therefore, order the grave to be sealed until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people he's been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate replied, you have soldiers for guard duty. Go and make it as secure as you know how. Then they went and secured the tomb by sealing the stone and posting the guard. <laughs> 